Terrence Bradley wound up being quite important on Friday. The day kind of started in a sleepy way. They had the former governor of Georgia take the stand to say, Fannie tried to hire me before she hired Nathan Wade. And on cross-examination, he admitted that when Fannie was talking to him about being special prosecutor, Nathan Wade was already in the room. So the defendants are basically suggesting Nathan Wade was already on board. You know, you might have been potentially added as another, but you were not going to replace Wade. Anyway, that's where that went. Fannie Willis's dad took the stand, the former Black Panther. Yeah, it's important to carry cash. No, we didn't live in this house. I never saw Nathan in the house in this, whatever. It was all minutia. Then comes Terrence Bradley, back to the stand, Nathan Wade's former lawyer. And Ashley Merchant got up there, Phil, and seemed to be, number one, trying to redeem herself because all of Fannie Willis's team, including Fannie herself, the day before, had said, Ashley Merchant's a liar. She lied. The only way, reason she got this hearing was she claimed she had Terrence Bradley, who was going to confirm an affair began prior to 2022. That didn't happen yesterday. Terrence Bradley, in his two minutes on the stand, suggested he had never texted with Ashley Merchant. She's a liar. This whole, what we shouldn't even be here. And Ashley Merchant started introducing texts between herself and Terrence Bradley into the record that completely rehabilitated Ashley Merchant, made Fannie Willis and her team look hysterical and dishonest, and showed, I believe, that Terrence Bradley, whether he asserted privilege on Friday or not, 100% behind the scenes was confirming this affair to Ashley Merchant prior to having a case of fright when he took the stand. Tell me where I'm going wrong. Well, no, I think you're you're pretty much where on with all of this, Megan. Listen, it's obvious that if you read between the lines, there's something in those text messages that Fonnie Willis really, really, really doesn't want to get out. They literally, Megan, they threw Terrence Bradley under the proverbial bus. They they accused him with unsubstantiated, uncharged claims of of having engaged in a sexual assault in Wait, order stand to by. discredit the stand man. By. Hold that thought because we're not there yet. Oh. Because what happened was Ashley gets him on the stand. She starts asking him about the text messages she and he have exchanged. This guy, though he represented Nathan Wade and on the stand was like, everything's privileged, I can't say anything. Oh, he was saying things to Ashley Merchant. He was saying a lot of things prior to actually getting dragged into court. He didn't have any qualms about attorney-client privilege whatsoever. So let's just start there. Yeah, well, we can infer that those text messages, uh, I think, will confirm what the former employee of the DA's office said, which was that the affair started much earlier than they had claimed that it did. In fact, as you said, that, you know, she said that it started in as early as 2019. I can infer from what I saw that those text messages probably confirm something along those lines. I hope that when the judge reviews those text messages and he's he did that or is doing that, you know, in, in an in-camera review, I hope that he rules that those things are admissible because it's obvious that there was a very I think, broad claim of attorney-client privilege that may or may not necessarily be entirely accurate. The lines, Megan, get blurred when when lawyers who are her friends, they are business partners, when they, when they undertake to represent uh, each other in something like a divorce, for example, the lines are very blurred because what the attorney might know uh, about his client might be from an attorney-client type of conversation. It might be from personal observation. It might be from water cooler talk around the office or just hanging out at lunch. So we just don't know exactly what the basis of Terrence Bradley's knowledge is. And that's what the judge has to figure out when he when he looks at all this stuff uh, back, you know, behind the scenes in his office. So I think that there's something there. We would not have seen her, and by her, I mean Fonnie Willis, we would not have seen her team uh, as as aggressively trying to keep this out as we did see unless they thought that those text messages could absolutely bury Fonnie Willis. Listen, if she can be shown to have perpetrated a fraud on this court, she could be disbarred and she could potentially yep. be jailed. She's essentially accusing all of these defendants of making false statements. But if it can come to light and if it is shown that she is doing that with this court, 
she's just as guilty as anybody she might be accusing of doing the same thing. And the consequences for her are very dire. She could lose her law license. She could wind up in jail, certainly out of office. And look, the state is looking at this, the state Senate. You've now got Congress looking at it. Fonnie Willis is under the microscope, and she does not want to be there. She doesn't like playing defense. Prosecutors are accustomed to being on the offense, but she is squarely on her heels. And what the judge rules about these text messages, uh, probably, you know, that that is the key to her fate. The judge's ruling literally, I think, controls her professional fate in this case. I mean, I, I think we're already there with with the testimony of Robin Yurti, who was Fanny's longtime friend and part for at least some time employee at the DA's office who said, you know, they lied. The, the affair began back in 2019. I know that because I witnessed it with my own eyes and because my good friend at the time, Fanny Willis, told me all about it. She was having an affair with Nathan Wade. Now, Nathan and Fanny disagreed. They said it didn't start till 2022. But when we, when we closed the day out on Thursday, we had counsel for Fanny you know, the state attorney, uh, Cross, say, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to put a bunch of witnesses up there to show you Robin Yurdy's a liar. That's what she promised. Didn't happen, Phil. I watched all day. I waited. Not a one. Yeah, all we got was Bonnie Willis's uh, Black Panther father who came to court and talked all about how he, you know, he loves cash. He tells his daughter to use cash. You know, cash is king. You know, it's a black thing. Everything needs to be paid in cash. And he was trying to talk about selling a script. And he talked about everything except what we needed to hear was when did this uh, whole thing start? He claimed to never really see uh, or talk to his daughter for various reasons. Uh, but surprisingly, he did know enough to know that at some point in 2019, she had some other boyfriend, uh, but it wasn't Nathan Wade. Uh, that testimony seemed to be, you know, not all that probative. It didn't really move the needle very much uh, other than to maybe explain why Fonnie Willis can't answer a straight question. She seems to get that naturally, you know, from her father, but we did not <laughs> see right, honestly. any, yeah, we didn't see any other witnesses that would contradict uh, the claim that, that this affair started in 2019. No, listen, that's uh, the for, thing. So, so, wait, I want to go through it. Hold on. Hold on. Cause I want to, I want to play some of the sound that, but this is important because when we close the day on Thursday, Robin Yurti did some damage. Fanny and Nathan later took the stand and said, Robin is wrong. It didn't begin until 2022. But when the day closed, Fanny's lawyer said the next day they were going to demolish Robin Yurti with witnesses showing us how dishonest she was. Not one. They didn't call one witness to, to even try to do that. It was either a bluff or it fell through, but she didn't have it. And trust me, if she had it, she would have put the witness on the stand because Robin Yurti hurt them badly. To the contrary, what we saw was Terrence Bradley, the lawyer, take the stand try his level best to wiggle. I mean, he was he was wiggling like an Elvis Presley, Presley concert, trying to get out of offering any conversations he's ever had with Nathan Wade. And of course, the defense was trying to say, he's casting too wide a net, Judge. He can talk about what he knew from Nathan Wade, his friend, his law partner. Yeah. He just can't talk about attorney-client communications, facts he learned from Nathan only in the context of the AC relationship that were offered to him for purposes of seeking legal advice. And, and Ashley Merchant was trying to show, you work together, you knew each other for years. Come on, there's office talk. Um, Sad Al, Trump's lawyer was trying to say, there's office talk, you guys talked about that. No, only about sports. That's the only thing we ever discussed outside of the attorney client. It was obviously untrue. This guy to me was like the biggest liar of anybody I've seen. This is, I don't know any of these players. I know you're down there, but. To me, he came across as the biggest liar because he lied to try to protect Nathan Wade at every turn. No, nothing other than attorney-client privilege discussions, only discuss sports bull. However, Ashley Merchant had him because prior to getting to court, he did text with her. He admitted it. And when she showed him his her phone with the text messages, he didn't deny it. And we got to hear uh, about at least two of the texts he's trying to get out of now. One was... In one text message introduced, hold on, we actually may just have it here. Yeah, let's just play it, where he was asked about one of the text messages and the content was revealed in SOT 3. Can you repeat the question? The question is, did I text you asking you if you knew who I could get an affidavit from about the affair? And you responded, no, no one would freely burn that bridge. Yes, I do see that. Okay. All right, Phil, so let's start with that. His response as Nathan Wade's lawyer 
friend, whatever, was not, what affair? There's no affair. Yeah. And, or I can't talk to you about this because it's attorney client privileged. Yeah, what he said was who who would want to burn that bridge. And that underscores, you know, he was obviously uncomfortable being there, but that alone proves that when Ashley Merchant claimed in her written legal pleading, she said, look, I'm going to bring Terrence Bradley to court. He's going to back up uh, the other witness, and he's going to back up and confirm that this affair started before they claimed it did in 2022. Ashley Merchant is a lawyer who would not have put that in writing in a legal pleading filed in a court if she did not have a good faith basis for putting it in there. That's how it works. I know Ashley Merchant. She's very reputable. She's not going to do something that is that uh, dishonest. If, if She was basically referring to her conversations with this witness through text messaging. That was her good faith basis for making the claim, and she would not have put it in there if it weren't true. The Megyn Kelly Show is supported by Grand Canyon University. Founded in 1949, GCU is a private Christian university that's dedicated to delivering an affordable and transformative higher education. Their vibrant campus is located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, and according to Niche.com, ranked a top 25 best campus in the country. As of June 2023, GCU offers 330 academic programs, with over 270 of them online, allowing you the freedom to earn your degree on your time from wherever you are. At GCU, your degree, whether it's a bachelor's, master's, or doctorate, integrates the free market system and a welcoming Christian worldview. Learn more about GCU's programs, competitive tuition rates, and scholarship offers from your university counselor. They are part of the supportive graduation team who takes a personalized approach to helping you achieve your academic goals, walking alongside you every step of the way. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University, private, Christian, affordable. For more info or to enroll, visit gcu.edu. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.